Hey guys, this is Alex from Brainbook. I'm super excited to show you this video. I'm going to have Mr. Ahmed Ramadan Sardek, who's one of the complex spine surgeons at the Royal London Hospital, and he's going to be taking you through the anatomy of the whole spine. You can use this video as a primer for the next couple of videos where we're going to be taking you through how we fix broken backs and necks. Watch this video through to the end, you will not regret it. And if you like it, don't forget to subscribe. Hello, my name is Ahmed Sadek. I'm one of the complex spinal surgeons working at the Royal London. And today I'm going to be giving you a brief overview about the spinal column and the vertebra and the nerves that are related to your spinal column. The spinal column is a really fascinating structure because it has a central role as being the midline scaffold of your whole body and it protects the most critical nerves that are involved with allowing you to walk, to run, to use your hands and perform your activities of daily living. It's probably the most fascinating collection of bones and nerves in the whole body and certainly they're critical to life. The spinal column is like a geographical map. It's made up of different regions and those regions serve different purposes. So right at the top you've got your neck, that's what we call your cervical spine, and that's made up of seven really interesting bones and below it is what we call your thoracic spine that's primarily your chest your rib cavity and that's made up of 12 separate vertebras 12 separate bones that join with or are attached to the ribs below that is your lumbar spine this is the region where most people experience back pain and it's probably the most common region that we operate on when we're dealing with back pain and pain associated with nerves that go to the legs Below that is your sacrum, and that's made up of a collection of bones that are integral to your pelvis. What this model demonstrates to some degree are the different curvatures of the spine. So high up in your cervical spine, just up here, it has a reverse C shape. Lower down in the thoracic spine, it curves out the other way, so it's a true C. And then in your lumbar spine, you have another reverse C shape. From the front, you have vertebra, vertebra disc, and that's the relationship all the way along the spine. And that's what this, these critical curves are what help keep you in balance, keep you upright and allow you to look forward and straight. We can see the really critical uh, vertebral arteries that pass through small bony openings in the cervical spine to enter into the cranial vault, into the brain. And these yellow plastic nerve roots, as you can see, uh, exit just behind this, these rather important arteries. Moving down, you can see the relationship of the nerve roots, the discs, and where they exit relative to their corresponding vertebra changes. So in the cervical spine, these nerve roots exit above their corresponding pedicle, and below in the thoracic and the lumbar spine, that's slightly different, they exit below their corresponding vertebra. We've briefly discussed the whole anatomy of the spine. I think it's really important for us to just focus on what we call the motion segment. What makes up a component of motion in your spine? Basically, what you have is a vertebra. The vertebra is that, that uniform unit within your vertebral column. It's made up of a body, which is a big chunk of bone, and it's the largest, most significant part of the unit that makes up the spinal column. The vertebra is attached to the posterior aspects of that single unit by what we call pedicles. Latin for feet, their little attachments, and they link up to what we call the posterior element, the back part of the vertebra. And that's made up of a lamina, and a, two lamina, and a spinous process. And laterally, you have these bony knobs, these outpouchings, which are called the transverse processes. And they're central because they're the attachments of all the big muscles that are critical in keeping you upright and facilitate movement. Within that ring, behind the body and in front of the lamina, is the spinal canal. That's the space in which you have the sac, the thick protective membrane that surrounds the cerebrospinal fluid, the clear fluid that bathes your brain and spine, sits the spinal cord, and lower down the cord equina, the tail of the horse, as it were, because it's made up of a very fine collection of nerve roots. The vertebra are connected to each other by discs. Um, we often hear a prolapsed disc, uh, my disc popped, now I've got severe pain. The disc is 
A is a complex structure that cushions the force acting on your spine. And there's one disc between each vertebra. The disc is made of a thick outer layer. It's called the annulus fibrosus, and the name suggests that it's very fibrous, and it is a fibrous ring that surrounds a soft, jelly-like material, and that's where the dampener for all the forces is. That disc, specifically the nucleus, the middle part, is full of water, and that's the key component that allows it to cushion impact on your spine. And as we age, it loses its water content and it makes the disc more vulnerable to injury and damage. Okay, starting back again at the most interesting area of the spine, the cervical spine, as I mentioned, it's made up of seven vertebra. The first two vertebra are really interesting. They're really fascinating because they're very different. They're called atlas and axes. And we draw those names from Greek mythology. The Greek god, historically, you've probably seen it in many structures, um, carries the world on his shoulders. And similarly, C1, the first vertebra of the cervical spine, and C2 carry the head. Taking a closer look, we have C1, C2. C1 is a perfect ring, it has no body. And that allows it to form a joint with C2 because C2 has this outpouching of bone which acts as a focus, a pivot for the C1 to rotate. And that's what allows us to turn left and right. So here we have a model of the cervical spine. It's made up of seven separate vertebra. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And as you remember, the C1 is unique. It has no body, it's a perfect ring. And as you can see on this model, the spinal cord runs straight through the middle of the canal. The critical artery that supply the brain, uh, the, the hind aspect of the brain are here, either side, and the exiting nerve roots are on the side, so respectively. Now, as we mentioned, the C2 is also very special in the sense it has this bony outpouching, what we call the peg, or the dontoid peg, pointing and protruding into the C1 ring, and that's what allows us to turn. The C2 joins with the C3, and surprisingly, and people don't realize this, in addition to having discs between the vertebra, which is demonstrated here, you also have other joints, and those joints are what we call facet joints, and you can see those quite clearly here and here. And those are the joints between respective vertebra. Uh, and they are, they're, again, they're a focus of motion within the cervical spine. And you have these facet joints everywhere in your spine, and they can be a focus, a point of pain for people. So now we have a lumbar vertebra. As you can see, this is significantly bigger in size than the cervical or thoracic vertebra. These are also really, really interesting structures. Uh, they have a very large body, and that's primarily because they sit right at the bottom of your spinal column. And as you can imagine, there's a huge amount of force acting upon them. Thanks a lot for watching the video, and if you enjoyed that, don't forget to subscribe. Next week, we're gonna be taking you through how we fix a broken lower back with lots of little cuts in the skin, rods and screws, and we'll be showing you GoPro footage of an actual surgery. See you next week.